Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and I'm going to show you how to launch your own server on Azure. Uh, and so a server would be considered some kind of computing service. And the one we're going to do right now is we're going to use virtual machines. So go the, uh, all the way to the top here to search, and I want you to type in virtual machine. I know it's on our dashboard here, but just to get, the, uh, get in the habit of always being able to find stuff, it's great to use the search. And then once we're here on the left-hand side, I want you to click Add. And we're going to be presented with a lot of different options. So the first thing we need to do is choose our resource group. Uh, we have another resource group we, that was created here for us for Azure. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Let's just choose the one that we created. I'm going to name this virtual machine. I'm going to call it My VM. We're going to launch it in uh, US East. Uh, if we wanted to choose an AZ, we could. So we go to Availability Zone and choose one. I'm just going to stick to No Infrastructure. Then we have Ubuntu here. It's using the latest version. It might be different for you. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Then we need to choose our size. This is going to really determine our cost. Here, this is $89 Canadian. I'm just going to go ahead and hit select uh, here. And we're just going to sort on the right-hand side based on cost. And we're going to choose the most inexpensive server, which is the B1LS. So that's one VPCU and half a gigabyte of RAM. Um, because this is just an example app, we're not going to do any, or a server, we're not going to do anything with it. So we might as well make sure we're not overspending uh, our free credits. Uh, we have the option to add a public key. This is what you generally would want to do, uh, but that's a lot of work and so uh, for this demo. So we're just going to choose password. They're very finicky about the passwords here. It has to have a uh, uppercase, lowercase, special character, um, number, and it also has to be 12 characters. So I'm going to type in testing with a capital T, testing, one, two, three, exclamation, exclamation, and then testing uh, with a capital on the T, one, two, three, explanation, exclamation. So there we go. Uh, we don't need um, any inbound ports. I'm going to say none because we're not SSHing in. I'm just going to click forward here to show you some of the other options. So we could choose our, our the type of uh, disk we'd be attaching. So it's by default on premium. You might want to choose standard or standard HDD. Generally, when you're launching web, web apps, you want SSD. If we were to choose standard, it would say, hey, you should really use premium. So we're just going to go back to premium. You're going to notice that the uh, disk is encrypted by default, so you can't have an unencrypted disk. That's a very good uh, default option. If we go over to networking, it's going to automatically select our VNet that we chose uh, and the default subnet that we uh, that it created uh, when we created the VNet. And then here we could choose whether we want an IP address or not. Um, if it had no IP or public IP address, it would still have a private IP address, um, and that would that would mean that it would, like it's really intended for a private subnet. Um, it has a network security group set on to basic here. Um, and that's pretty much it here. You could also put it behind a load balancer. We're not going to do that. Let's go over to management. Management, we have a couple options here like identity, auto shut, shut down, backup. Um, these are all fine. We're just going to leave it alone. For advanced, we could put custom data in here. That means we could provide it a script that it would use to initially set up the server. We're not going to do that. Um, and that's about it. So I'm going to go back to basic and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to hit review, review plus create. And what we're going to have to do is wait for this validation step. That was very fast. It might take multiple seconds for you or even a minute, um, but sometimes it's faster than others. So now I'm going to go down below and hit create. And we're just going to wait for that deployment to be submitted. It's going to say deployment is underway and then soon it's going to say deployment is complete. So I'll see you back here in a moment when deployment is complete. Great, so we had to wait uh, a few minutes there and now it says deployment is complete and we can pre proceed to go to resource. And so here's our virtual machine. We have some CPU, some network, some disk. So there's some activity here. Um, if we wanted to gain access to it, there should be a connect button here. We're not gonna be able to gain access to it because we just didn't set it up in a way that that was the case. We have a few options down the left-hand side, such as the disks that are actually attached to it, and maybe the size here. So if maybe if we wanted to um, resize, change it to a larger size, we could go ahead and do that. Um, but there's nothing really exciting here to do. I just wanted to show you how to launch your own virtual machine. And now that we have our own virtual machine uh, launch, I'm gonna go back to overview. We're gonna go ahead and delete that because this is now costing us money. Uh, it's not costing us a lot of money, but uh, again, we're done here. So we'll just go ahead and delete. We're going to say yes to delete and now it says it's deleting the virtual machine and so we're just going to wait until this is uh, finished deleting and a lot of times you can just look at the progress up here and it'll say deleting the virtual machine 
could take a few seconds. It could take a few minutes. Um, it just depends. So I'll, I'll see you here in a little bit when this is done deleting. So after waiting a little while here, it says it's how it successfully deleted the virtual machine. If we want to make sure that it's deleted, let's go make our way over to virtual machines, the top here in the search. And you're going to notice that it's still showing up there, but it said it was deleted. And this is the thing with uh, Azure is that it takes time for it to propagate. So what we'll have to do is just hit refresh and now it's gone. So just be aware that um, sometimes the consistency in terms of what you see in the UI is a bit delayed. Uh, and so um, if you remember clicking delete and it says that it deleted it, just uh, have a bit of patience there and hit refresh and just double check to make sure that's the case. So there you go.